Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. We are a historic church in downtown Durham that is called by God to be steeped in the faith, overflowing with gratitude, and motivated by love. My name is Jade Norwood, and I'm a member of the Lay Leadership Committee. We are so excited to be worshiping with you today. If you are a guest, thank you for joining us. To our Trinity family, we are so grateful to have the chance to stay connected and worship together while we are physically apart. During our time together, we are going to sing, pray, and hear a word from guest pastor, Reverend Jenny Erlingson on 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. We encourage you to sing out, engage in prayer, and lean in, because our God meets us when we enter into worship together, with our full hearts, even when we're apart. At 11.30 a.m., we are going to have a time of fellowship through Zoom. The link is available in the Worship Reminder email and the Steeple, which is our weekly newsletter that you can subscribe to online at trinitydurham.org. Will you now join us in worship? Ginny and her husband are missionaries in Iceland, and we get to hear from her this morning. Ginny is also one of the reasons that I said yes to occupational ministry, because as a young teenager, I sat as I listened to Ginny proclaim the word over and over again. And today, she's still one of my favorite preachers of all time and a beloved mentor. So put your phones on silent, set aside every distraction, and lean in because I believe that God has an important word for our community this morning. Ginny is going to be preaching on confirming our call, both as people and as a community before God. And so as we do that, I invite you to lean in this afternoon at 2.30. We're going to be doing botanicals for the budget in the breezeway. Come out to Trinity, social distance, check out our building, remember our space, remember who we are, and invest in some botanicals as we look at our budget for the next year. Will you join me as we give a word of prayer before we get going? God, I thank you. I thank you for Pastor Ginny. I thank you for her faithfulness to uncover your word, 
for your people again and again. I ask that you would encourage our hearts that you have a particular call for the family of Trinity, that you're continuing to do beautiful and mighty work in this church, that you have been calling our community for hundreds of years and we get to pick up the baton. I ask that you would ready our hearts, that you would open our hands, that we might receive this word from you. I pray these things in the matchless name above every other name, Jesus. Amen. We have two pieces of scripture today. The first comes to us from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. I am giving you these instructions, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies made earlier about you, so that by following them you may fight the good fight. Our second piece of scripture comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble. For in this way, entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be richly provided for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jenny Erlinson, and I'm so excited to be sharing with you today. I'm so um, thankful to be partnered with you guys to bring forth a message and hopefully encourage you, Trinity United. I love, absolutely love your pastors, Daniel and Sheree. They um, are awesome people, amazing uh, lovers of God, and have known them for a very, very, very long time, especially Sheree um, in our junior high ministry at our church in Huntsville. So just really great to get to partner in this way that I can speak to you guys all the way from Iceland right now. So I'm so thankful to get to share the message with you, and I hope that the Lord speaks something significant to you during this time. So if you'll just join me, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Ask God to bless this message. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to get to share your words and get to share with the people who are listening today, Lord God. I pray that you would anoint these words and Holy Spirit, that you would speak in a way like you do individually and specifically to each and every heart, Lord God. I thank you for today of the opportunity to get to remind all of us what it means to confirm our calling and what that looks like, what the implications are for us and for those around us, Lord God. So have your way this morning, and I just thank you so much again for the opportunity to share. In Jesus' name, amen. So yes, I'm coming from coming to you from beautiful Iceland. My family um, serve here in currently the south of Iceland. We lived for two years in Akureyri, Iceland, which is in the north, which a ton of snow <laughs> falls all the time. It snows probably from about September to May. So um, even now in October, this is a season where everyone across the country is starting to change out their tires and get prepared and get ready uh, for the winter coming, whatever that looks like. Could be blizzards, could be lots of ice, who knows? But so we moved here in August of 2018, following the call of the Lord. My husband is Icelandic, but he lived in the U.S. for 16 years, working majority of his time in inner city ministry and outreach, connecting with a lot of different churches, a lot of different denominations as they were impacting the community. And then I spent probably about 12 years in pastoral ministry at a church in Huntsville as well, working with youth and then working with women. And so now together we get to do our best to see 
Iceland um, experience the love of Jesus, whatever that looks like. So our heart is to serve. Our heart is to come alongside um, various churches here, partnering with them for the sake of the gospel. But I want to encourage you this morning about confirming your call, about making every effort to come into agreement with the call that God has put on your life. And you might be saying like, Okay, in this season of pandemic and turmoil and all the things happening, like the last thing on my mind is my call. But I want to encourage you that call is so important right now of knowing what God has spoken over you, of knowing the history of your relationship with him, if that makes sense, knowing the things that he's put into your heart, he himself. I recently shared um, on my social media a verse that has been foundational to me for as long as I can remember. It is Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now, that means that there's a level of coming to agreement with him, of delighting in the Lord, of, of loving him, of seeking him, where he puts these things in our hearts that become our desires. And so then we begin to operate in who he's called us to be. And so there is such um, intention, I think, needed even now to not lose heart, to not forget who he's called you to be. And therefore, out of the overflow of that, what he's called you to do, what impact he's called you to make. And I know, I know, I feel it too. It's like, I'm tired. I don't want to make any impact. I'm just trying to potentially survive and thrive during a pandemic and during everything that's going on. But I I, want to point you to to some scriptures that encourage um, the listeners to make every effort to confirm the call because your call matters for you. It matters for those around you. And then it matters for those coming behind you. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, Paul is giving this charge to Timothy. He says, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Timothy, I'm giving you a charge in accordance with what has already been spoken over you, the prophetic that's been spoken over you. And you might think like, what are you talking about? What are the words God has spoken? What are the verses that you have read? What are the things that have burned in your heart, the things God has branded you with in your history with him, if you know him? What are the things spoken over you? Recall them so that you can fight the fight well. That has come into play so many times, even in our time in Iceland, where whether it's been frustrations or maybe there's been setbacks or maybe there's been challenges. My husband and I have consistently remembered the things that God spoke to us even before we came, the things he would whisper to us, even as we would travel and just visit family and come, those things that he was stirring in our heart for Iceland, the dreams we've had, the scriptures that would jump out to us, the burning in our heart for the people of Iceland. Those things matter because when you recall those things, you do fight well. You can step out in faith. You don't let those setbacks hold you back and hold you down from continuing to move forward when you remember those things. So he says, I want you to recall the prophecies that have been made so that you can fight well because those things that have been given to you have actually equipped you with tools to fight, have actually equipped you with tools to believe even in your solitude, maybe even in potential isolation, even in a time where you're cut off maybe from other resources and tools that you've had. But if you will remember what God has spoken over you, then you can learn to fight well. I want to also point you to 2 Timothy, I mean, excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. And in it, we get a similar verse. And it says, therefore, my brothers and sisters, okay, we're all included in this, okay, so don't count yourself out. Make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the internal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Make every effort to confirm your call. And so I love this verse because... You know, there's so many times where we have our excuses and we have our reasons why. No, this is not for me. It doesn't apply to me. Or God, you know, I've been going through this much. Like, how could I even be called? My circumstances don't even look like I have any kind of calling on my life. But he says here, make every effort. 
Have you made every effort? Have you sought him? Have you come into agreement with him? Have you um, uh, spoken maybe to others in, for encouragement? Make every effort to confirm the call, to com confirm your calling and election for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Because again, like the first Timothy verse, as far as fighting well, you will not stumble because no circumstance or situation will derail you off of the purpose that you know God has for you. It won't derail you off of the things that you know that he has for you to do. And again, that calling, it is for you. It is for others around you. And it is for those coming behind you. When I think about this, I, I'm drawn to the story and I'm reminded of the story of the Samaritan woman. If you look in John chapter four, and I'm going to flip real quick. So if you, you have your Bibles with you or your phone app, if you'll go ahead and turn with me. And I love this because I, I love, I don't know about you, journeying through scripture and seeing how God begins to weave all these things together and how um, the things that people did, they weren't just, just for them. It, that was a portion of it but it had implications for even the future. And so if you think about the Samaritan woman, right? Jesus meets her in chapter four, which is so, I mean, he was so groundbreaking, so amazing that he's going out of his way to sit at this well, to come into contact with this woman, to encounter her, to give her an opportunity to, to drink from water that would never run dry. And so in John chapter four, um, at John chapter four, and let's go to um, verse 10. We'll start there. Okay. And so this woman begins by saying, basically like, um, hello, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. Why are you even talking to me? This is not even like culturally appropriate, right? That there's, there's animosity between our groups. Number one, number two, I'm a woman. Like, like, what are you doing here? Why are you even having this conversation with me or trying to have a conversation with me? And if you think about what's going on today and all the things and the turmoil and the conflict and tension between even groups of people, between cultural systems, between ethnicities, um, think about our place and our call as believers that we're called to be groundbreakers. We're called to be icebreakers, if you will. We're called not to allow any societal norm, any tension or issue to keep us from coming um, and, and coming in relationship with people around us, to talking with them, to bringing Jesus into the situation. That we're, we're, we don't get a pass because, well, no, this conflict is going on, so I can't do that. No, Jesus, he stepped into these moments, stepped into where there could be places of tension, of potential because of his calling, right? Because the ultimate calling is in Hebrews, right? Because of the joy set before him, right? He endured the cross because he was bringing all people to him. And so he didn't care about anything that was going on because it was about a person. It was about this woman in this instant. And so in verse 10, it says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? And this is what she said. And this is what I want us to begin to, to focus on. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? I want you to think about this because this is actually the only place in scripture that mentions Jacob's well. But if we go to Genesis, and specifically, if you look at Genesis um, 28, when um, Jacob goes to Sheshem and he's there and the Lord gives promises basically and says, I'm going to give you this land that all nations will be blessed through you, that I'm going to be with you. I'm going to watch over you. So those are the words God is speaking to Jacob. He's given him promises. He's giving him a call. I've called you to, to be in this land, to have this land. And so when archaeologists, archaeologists, <laughs> Hard word to say. Please forgive my tongue because learning Icelandic for two years, sometimes my words get mixed up anyway. So you guys know what I'm saying, right? Okay. So, but in the studies, they attribute this well because um, Sychar doesn't exist anymore, but they attribute it actually to Sheshem. The most likely the well, Jacob's well was found in Sheshem. 
And this well is called Bed Yaakov, the well of Jacob. And so historians and all of them point at this is the place. So even though Genesis didn't tell us specifically that Jacob dug a well, but we it's it's almost without doubt because he had to feed his livestock. He had to feed his sheep. He had to feed um, his sons and daughters and give them water from, from a well. He had to have a water source. So he dug this well as a part of him living in the land according to his call. So even she is saying, because Jacob operated in this way, had this well that he was able to drink from it himself, right? So your calling is for you. He was able to give his sons and his livestock and his family water. Your calling is for others around you. And then fast forward to this moment where this well is used as a meeting point between Jesus and this woman. Your calling has implications for those coming behind you. What is it about your call that God is gonna use for those who are coming after you? What is he gonna use out of the overflow of your obedience and your action in accordance with those things? How does he want to affect the lives of people, right? Let's talk about the calling being for you first, right? Jacob was able to drink from the water from this well. Right, That was a part of him living in this land, of coming into agreement with what God spoke over him. Our first primary call is to drink from the well that never runs dry, is to be with Jesus, is to be in communion with him, in relationship with him. If this time has not taught us anything, I hope it teaches us that, wow, everything else will fade, but our relationship with Christ will never fade. It it is eternal. It is that eternal reward. Who we are in Christ matters. What we do out of the overflow of that relationship matters. We have to have that relationship to flow from. Can I encourage you? If you're questioning even like, what is my call? If you're questioning even my purpose, what is all that? I encourage you to get to the feet of Jesus, to get close to your Savior. That is your first and primary call. If you don't do anything else, Your call first is to be with Jesus, is to sit at his feet, spend time with him, get to know him, and in doing so, knowing who you are. That's your first call. The second call, the well was used for his sons, his family, the livestock. Your calling overflows. I have that relationship. It overflows to people around you. There's this verse in Hebrew that I just, I really love, and I I think there's lots of... um, We can take lots of things from it because it's such an encouraging, maybe challenging verse, but it's in Hebrews 12, verse 13. And it says this, make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather healed. Think about this, make level paths for your feet. So that means when I'm beginning to line things up in my life and come into agreement with what what God has said over me, come into agreement, with who he is and and begin to pattern my life after him and make those level paths for my feet, right? Again, before the other verse, confirm your calling, right? Make every effort so that you will not stumble. When I ensure that there are no stumbling blocks in front of me, I also ensure and begin to make level paths for other people so that even those who are weak, even those who are on the edge, even those who are dealing with different issues, that they would not be further disabled, but rather healed. What calling has God spoken to you out of the overflow of your relationship with him that he's going to use to bring healing and restoration and deliverance and salvation and all those things to people around you, right? You are significant. Your role matters. Your sphere, a sphere of influence, it does matter. When you come into agreement with Jesus and operate out of that calling, what does God want to do around you? What can he do around you? He can make level paths for your feet that cause people to not continue to be disabled, but rather healed. He can do things around you where where there's turmoil and tension and maybe there's situations or there's problems that need to be solved. He can, through you, bring solution. Even now where you sit, through your prayers, through your obedience, through your action, make level paths for your feet so that the disabled may be healed. So your calling is for other people around you. 
And then lastly, right, that calling is for people who are coming behind you. We see this as this woman in John 4 is sitting, receiving from physically her needs, right, from Jacob's well. She's getting water from there. But the most important, the man who is greater than Jacob comes and sits at that well, sits on the, this fruition and this manifestation, if you will, this um, tangible piece of God's promise, the one who was and is to come, right? The Alpha and the, the Omega, the one who, who initiated the promise is now sitting <laughs> at the fruit of this promise, sitting at a physical representation, sitting at this well to encounter this woman. What does God want to build through your life? What does he want to build through your obedience to the call? What paths will be created and foundations laid that future generations will walk on? What things will happen? What will be, um, what things will be, are planted even now that future generations will eat the fruit from, right? I think about the person who one day decided that he was going to plant a sycamore tree, right? Or maybe it was already there. I don't know how that worked back then in biblical times, right? The guy who was like, you know what? I need to have a tree here. Right And trees taking so long to develop and to grow and to be big and strong enough to one day hold the weight of a man named Zacchaeus who would use that tree to get a better glimpse of Jesus because he couldn't see Jesus among the crowd. Right? What is God building through your life? What is he planting even in your life now that will grow and sprout and be used as a tool for somebody to know and to see Jesus? That is what we're talking about. That when you make every effort to confirm your call, when you come into agreement and recall those things that God has spoken over you, you are coming into agreement with what's going to feed you, what's going to give you life, joy, <laughs> the worship that God has placed in you to, to pour back on him. And then you affect those around you, seeing things shift around you. My husband and I like to, like to talk a lot about being atmosphere changers. That I have to believe that if Jesus said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, if I, according to the word, am a temple of the Holy Spirit, that means when I walk into a room, the king of kings walks, walks in too. Holy Spirit walks in. And I have to believe that even that brings change, right? And then, Lord, what do you want to do for the future? See, these become acts of faith that when you make those efforts to confirm your call, when you are faithful to plant in season, even if you don't understand why or you don't even think anything can come out of it, the Lord takes those and brings multiplication and growth longevity that can affect Samaritan women who will then turn to their towns and their communities and say, I have met the Messiah. That is what's on the line for you guys as a church. <laughs> I think about you and the, your history of the, the circuit riders going through frontiers and wilderness places to bring the gospel to people. That is your history, your history, your history, even that, you know, Francis Asbury, right? He traveled with a man named Harry Hosier, or otherwise known as Black Harry, together partnering and sharing the gospel. A white man and a black man in the 1780s. That is your history. Make every effort to confirm the call. Make every effort. And so I hope that you're encouraged today that no matter what your day-to-day -day looks like, that you would take even five minutes and sit and say, God, what, is, what are the things you've spoken over me? What are the things that you've spoken over my life, Lord God? What are the things you've spoken even over us as a community, us as a church, us as a people? I think the global church is beginning to talk like, what have you spoken over us as a church community? What, what do you, who do you want the body of Christ to be in this hour? But it starts with you. So I encourage you today. And Lord, I thank you so much for, again, the opportunity to share with the people listening, Lord God. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak a better word to the hearts of men and women 
So I pray that you would speak specifically to them even now, reminding them of what you say over them, reminding them of how loved they are, how cherished, how valued, how treasured, Lord God. I just thank you so much for this time. And I pray, Lord God, that you would be glorified through their lives, through all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, it was my honor and pleasure to be with you today. And I hope that throughout the day, throughout the week, that you would hear the whispers of the Holy Spirit reminding you of who you are in him and what he's called you to do for the people around you and for generations to come. Bye. Trinity United. 
I just want to thank you for the opportunity to get to share with you. And I hope encourage and challenge you in your walk with Jesus. And I pray blessings over you in favor and strength as you walk out what it means to recall the call, to make every effort to know what it is that God has said over you. And so I pray that you are established in that so that you can affect yourself, you can affect those around you and affect those who are to come. Much blessings over you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again.